I like the sound uh, quite a lot. It's like, you know, it's just like a really soft sounding um, saw, which is kind of interesting because saws don't usually sound like sawtooth waves don't really sound soft by default because their characteristic by nature is very hard sounding. Um, that's the point of the saw wave. It has, you know, like all the frequencies and that's great and all, but using um, not non like like stationary parameters out of the flanger and phaser by like you know not modulating any sort of rates and just having it say follow a keyboard tracking or note tracking then we can get that sort of soft saw sound uh, and that's what's kind of nice about this sound so i'll keep the one on the right open for like comparison because i haven't made this sound the most recently so I'm not going to exactly remember everything about it, but I'm still going to do it in this so we can all see together how it was crafted. So we have our saw wave and we're going to, you know, put on some unison, get it there. Doesn't really do anything. I'm also going to take down the randomness because it's, you know, pretty stereo wide. Now it's not so stereo wide and there should be, yep, some amplitude envelopes going on like so around 350. And they're pretty just straight, like there's not much curve going on. We're going to make an envelope two here around 250 with no sustain. Let's see. Yep. So now we have two envelopes. Now this one we're going to use for our filter, just like this. And I really am enjoying at the moment, like the German filter. Sounds a little different from the, you know, the MG or just even regular the low by default um it sounds different and i like that it's like you know it still has the same like fat sound to it because you're cutting off the high frequency so fast but it just sounds different and i don't know how to like in what way it would sound different per se but um it also reacts a little different if you you know look at it in this way it looks a little different like the peak was higher in the german filter and i'm sure there's some technical stuff that you don't see too too much like that's what this german filter looks like and if we flip over to an mg low you can see there's a little different types of phasing which means that the filter itself the shape that it takes is actually different even though that staring at it you might be like oh hey that's just a regular mg low or regular low but it's not uh we can kind of see some fuzz building up in it when we come down to the low it gets uh kind of weird looking on the top it looks nice and crisp and when it comes down here it kind of looks a little blurry so there is some different like harmonic content happening as we're moving down in the filter similar to how the french filter um does have the same sort of thing we can see the filter is actually moving pretty weirdly when we move around like that so but we're gonna use a german one i do have a filter modulation going to this from where it is now to the max point so we can get it to open all the way up. All right, that's nice. That's all there's, that's all there's, that's all that's happening here. Uh, aside with some stereo stuff that's being done right here with the detune just a little bit. To add a little bit of stereo, uh, you know, there's just a macro again going on. Not too, too important. And yeah, so here are my effects. I'm gonna have hyper dimension, a flanger, phaser, delay, reverb, EQ. The EQ is just removing some of the lower frequencies just for cleanliness and the sound. And then there's some hyper dimension here, which is being macroed a little bit in order to, again, open up some stereo width when I move my macro around. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again. A little bit like that, a little bit like this. So here we go. Now we'll have way more stereo if I move uh, this, although I put it on the wrong, the wrong one. There we go, much more stereo now, so that's great. And now we're gonna do our flanger, phaser. We'll do our flanger first. So basically, like I said, the rate is off. So that gives me the opportunity to mess with the feed and all sorts of stuff and the mix, and then come in here to my note and actually make some adjustments. So in here, we have the depth being affected in this manner, that. I know I do have a macro on over here. 
uh, for the metal, which, yes, brings it on to about 75% of the original. And then I do the same thing with the phaser. The phaser's off. Depth at zero. Frequency, that's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this note here, here, bring them down, move this one slightly to the left, and that is done. Again, I'm going to add this macro to 75%. Because this macro three is the metal sound, which makes it sound like this. And when it's off. Pretty important to the sound. Uh, that's the whole point. This is what makes it sound soft now. Makes it sound a little softer if we open up the filter. Still sounds a little softer. It still has the crispness, obviously, because we've removed any of the low pass and then when we put it on it has more pluckiness to it and it still sounds quite different than a regular saw sounds a little softer sounds a little different and that's nice to hear in your music and work so now we're going to add our delay like that we have this one on eighths with dotted dotted regular not dotted halves and I usually I like to macro these as well uh, in sort of like this so I always connect my reverbs and delays together because that's I don't want to waste two macros on you know two things that more or less do the same thing so usually when there's delay I add reverb I don't go without one or the other uh, they come hand in hand for me personally so that's what I'm going to do. Um, put some low cup, low cup, low cut up actually. And now we can turn on our effect. Probably bring this down to like 30 for each one. There we go. And then we just add our EQ to take out some of that mud and low end that we don't really want. And uh, that's cool. And if you want, I can show you an audio example of where I actually used this exact sound. All right, here we go. Um, there's basically, I have this piece that kind of goes like this. I have no clue how loud this is going to be. So it kind of goes like that. And at one point I was like, yeah, I'm gonna make an intro for this or something. And I came up with these saws. This is when I made the sound, I believe originally. So there's not nearly as much modulation here because it's, it's built in here. But if I were to switch this to the sound we just made. You'll hear it sounds like identical. So that's where that's where the sound came from. And uh, yeah. So I hope I inspired you a little bit to mess with the flanger and phaser because they're great tools. I use them all the time on my uh, chords and leads and stuff like in still movement, sometimes with movement. But they're both great tools when used subtly. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Peace.